And it doesn't take you very long to spot one of them, does it? Take you about eight seconds. You'll be listening to some guy. There have been no credible reports of specific claims of pets being harmed, injured, or abused by individuals. This guy is f***ing stupid. <laughs> What's up, guys? Your boy Benny. It was the F Aroundest of Times, the Find Outingest of Times. 2024 is the F Around and Find Out year. So many people effing around. It's really impossible to keep a full list of them. And so many people finding out. And one of those people who's finding out is ABC News Tonight. Should have never actually gotten a debate. I got to tell you, the more I think about it, the more I'm like, we got to be smarter as Republicans, right? You got to like dig your heels in and say, if you're Kamala Harris's sorority sister, Okay, if you're her little yaya twin and you're running ABC News, then you don't get a debate. Okay, you get conflicted out. It, conflict of interest it happens in the court of law all the time. Oh, okay, the judge is sleeping with the lawyer or whatever. You know, it's conflict of interest. You can't try the case, and uh, that is exactly what you saw. And we saw something interesting this weekend. We were driving down the road here in Tampa, and I look up and I see a billboard, and it is a billboard with David Muir's smug, dopey looking face on it, uh, advertising ABC News, World News tonight. I said, oh, man, they must be in trouble. If they are buying advertising in Tampa, Florida, they must have some problems. And lo and behold, David Muir's ratings are dropping like a rock, like a meteorite from heaven drops 12% following ABC News debate scandal. The show has fallen off a cliff. Lost nearly a million viewers. Lost a million viewers. So a million people tuned out of ABC News tonight. Good. Gracious. Good for them. Following uh, the September debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, ABC News World Tonight anchor David Muir, who served as one of the moderators, has seen his viewership collapse. Fox News saying it uh, averaged 6 million viewers instead of the normal 7.5. Uh, well, I can't believe there's that many people still watching nightly news. The Nielsen ratings are completely broken anyway, but it uh, doesn't matter. They, they, the numbers were twice that uh, just a decade ago. So this is dinosaur media, dinosauring. Muir and Lindsey Davis were criticized for fact-checking Trump. They've since said that there was no plan to fact-check Kamala Harris and that maybe the a ABC affidavit is, is right. You know, the affidavit it says that they gave Kamala the questions ahead of time and that they had promised Kamala Harris that there would be no mean questions to her. There'd be no questions about certain topics she didn't want to have hand, uh, touched and that they'd only fact check Trump. It was a rigged debate. Kamala Harris acted like it was a rigged debate the entire time. Smug and sneering and smiling. Like it's a, you know, the, the, the entire thing. It's clearly a setup. It was a, it was a crime scene. And everybody saw it. Look at that. You can see here. ABC News. This is the, uh, these are the ratings. ABC News has collapsed in the ratings. And, well, it's, I guess, follow, hopefully following in the direction here, you can see NBC and CBS also collapsing the ratings. Negative 20%. Yikes. ABC David Muir sees newscast ratings decline after controversial debate performance. Oh, man. Now he's on to explain himself, David Muir. Oh, boy. Uh, okay, so I want to remind you guys of how bad this was because it is easy to just kind of just like forget these things and there, there's so much happening. Donald Trump, another assassination attempt. Just a reminder that David Muir didn't just fact check Donald Trump. So he's uh, getting attacked for fact checking Trump. He deserves that. Fact check Trump by our count six times. Most of the fact checks were fake. Not even real fact checks because he was wrong. He's wrong on the FBI data. But there's one in particular that was egregious where he tells Donald Trump whether he was being sarcastic or not. This is what passes for debate moderation these days. This this is like a parent teacher conference. And the teacher is like arguing semantics of like the third grade. It is a despicable act. Look at this again. Here you go. You can't get worse than this. You just can't. Donald Trump tells a joke and David Muir 
uh, does a does a fact check on whether Trump was being sarcastic. 2020 election, you repeatedly uh, falsely claimed that you won, many times saying you won in a landslide. In the past couple of weeks leading up to this debate, uh, you have said, quote, you lost by a whisker, that you, quote, didn't quite make it, that you came up a little bit short. I are said you, that. Are you now acknowledging that you lost in 2020? No, I don't acknowledge that at all. But I you said did that say sarcastically. That. You but know that. It was said, oh, we lost by a whisker. That was said sarcastically. So Donald Trump has every right to say, you know, I'm talking off the cuff. I'm making my own. I'm speaking for myself. I'm making my own commentary. And I'm being sarcastic. How are you? How are you possibly able to? And look at the way that Kamala Harris be, carries herself in this. Hmm, look at the way that they. Even the, the camera positions, the camera positions looking up at Kamala is looking down at Trump. Any filmmaker will tell you there's the, there's the hero angle, right? And then there's the, the, the villain angle, the diminutive angle looking down. The best, the best part about this is David Muir's response to this is remarkable. Listen That's to why they're allowing them to come into our country. I did watch all of these pieces of video. I, I, I didn't detect the sarcasm. Lost by a whisker. We didn't quite make it. And, and we should just point out here as clarification. And you know. Shut the f*** up, dude. <laughs> what? I didn't detect your sarcasm. This is why we're all watching the debate, you dumb bastard. What is that? I didn't. To, to, to figure out whether David Muir can detect sarcasm. This is what we're all concerned about right now in the debate. So, uh, so despicable. Here, David Muir trying to defend himself. And we spent a lot of time, and um, I believe it was our duty to ask the issues that, that Americans care about. You know, the economy, like are we better off than we were four years ago? Immigration, what are you going to do about the border? Why did you wait so long before you acted on the border? Those, those types of questions. Mm -hmm. Reproductive rights, Afghanistan, do you bear any responsibility? Uh, peaceful transfer of power with the next election coming. Mm -hmm. You know, these are all really important issues. The issues of our time, really. And I always say as a moderator, you know, what the candidates decide to do with that time, you can ask the questions but they'll answer with whatever they choose to answer with. That's right. And you have to be ready for whatever might come your way, even the most unexpected of moments. Uh, as you all know, you know what I'm talking about. Right. And, and, and I will say this, all of the noise that you hear afterward about you know, which candidate won the debate, did the moderators win or lose, that's just noise. Yeah. You all know that. The most important thing to remember is that you all have the power. Everybody at home yes. has the power. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> Look at the audience. <laughs> it's the Golden Girls? Like, what is this? It's a nursing home? Okay, yeah, that is, this is all, these are all the viewers of ABC News. These are the, the final viewers of ABC News. Fox roasting uh, the ratings decline, the much-deserved ratings decline, uh, saying that David Muir's lying there. It, it was about David Muir. If it wasn't about David Muir, why'd you keep interrupting Trump? Why'd you keep fact-checking Trump? Why'd you fact-check his sarcasm, you jackass? Glad that David Muir, towards the end of his interview, mentioned that it's the, the people, the American voters, the viewers who have the power. Because you know what they're doing right now? They're tuning out of his show. There's been a 12% <laughs> drop in viewership for his show since the debate. And that's a little bit encouraging to me because it shows that American voters aren't stupid, that they actually expect more from the press. They expect the press to hold themselves to a higher standard than the one that ABC's moderators held them to. And this is actually one of the reasons after the debate, I think I was one of the only ones who thought that Trump won. And it was because he was debating three people at once, and also because the swing state voters from back home in my home state of Michigan and others, they didn't get what they wanted out of that debate. They did not get to know Kamala Harris. They didn't no. get straight answers from her. And she looked worse as a result. That's a it, like, great point. It's played out in the polling. The bombshell claims of an ABC whistleblower, we've been covering this, is a, a sworn affidavit right here that... ABC from somebody who's allegedly worked for ABC News for 10 years in various technical and administrative positions. This affidavit claims that Kamala Harris was able to ban certain topics that it was agreed to that Donald Trump would be the subject to fact check during the debate. Kamala Harris would not face comparable scrutiny widely known throughout the company that Donald Trump would be fact checked. In fact, various people were assigned to fact check observations. As it was perceived candidate Trump would make during the debate. In fact, in fact, Harris campaign required assurances that Trump would be fact checked. This was done via multiple communications with the Harris campaign, whereas the Trump campaign was not included in these negotiations. 
to my understanding, any of the rules negotiated the conversations pertaining to the debate uh, ha have to have both Trump and Harris as part of it. Uh, Harris campaign was provided with sample questions, while not the exact questions, covered similar topics that would appear in the debate. So Kamala Harris got getting the debate. This is what the affidavit alleges. Kamala Harris got the uh, got the debate questions in advance, got assurances that Donald Trump would be the only one fact check. I mean, these are these are this is what happened, right? Harris campaign received particular accommodations, including but not limited to providing that the podium significantly smaller than Donald Trump. Assurances re regarding split screen television views that would favorably impact Kamala Harris's appearance relative to Donald Trump. We've talked about that. ABC News has responded saying that Kamala didn't get the questions in advance. That this wasn't the claim. The claim was that she got the topics of the debate. And when you ask when you ask people like what did Kamala Harris sound like during the debate, and when you ask an, uh, when you ask someone who is honest, what they they all say is that she sounded like an actress reciting lines because we all know how Kamala Harris talks, so she's just reciting the lines. USA Today had to fact check whether David Muir and Lindsey Davis were fired. <laughs> hopefully, this fact check turns out to be false one day. Uh, they deserve it, and hopefully, uh, the American people continue to tune out of this programming. That's actually the easiest way to get them fired, right? Make their brand so toxic that no one can watch them. That's how you do it. It's your boy, Manny. Like, share, and subscribe to people who are real news. And I will never fact check sarcasm. See ya.